President, uh, injury attorney Simone Redwine. Throw in her red wine emojis and don't forget me with the facts emojis. All right, next up, let's get to what we all come here for, and that's Diddy. So Diddy is on side watch. Diddy, welcome back to the court of public opinion. Can't wait to break down everything that's happened since Wednesday. Since Wednesday, he's been added to side watch. Side watch attorney. Brian Ross, explain to us before we get talking about this, what exactly, who define, who puts you on side watch? Is it something that an attorney can request? Who puts you on side watch and what causes a person to be put on side watch? All right. When a person goes to jail, 99% of them in this country, you know, in the larger cities, have a psychological evaluation. New York, California, LA, Miami, whatever it is. And that psychologist determines if you are a threat to yourself and or the jail, mostly yourself. In this instance, in all likelihood, Diddy had some questions that were asked of him, which led a psychologist to believe that he could be a himself. The disadvantage of the side side jail is when you're in this part of the jail, it is a separate part of the jail. There are therapists, you wear a different color outfit. Everyone else is wearing orange, you're wearing pink. So everyone knows oh, that you can go off at any moment. It's a completely different color. The disadvantage is that, you know, you don't get to go outside as much. You don't have, you have restrictive movements. They're on top of you because what? They don't want you to come. The advantage of it is, believe it or not, that part of the jail is cleaner. You have more organization. You get different food. You get a whole better treatment. But you're around some people who have a lot of mental disabilities. Mm. So it sounds like Diddy and his lawyer, I mean, the man was fine last week when he was robbed. Jet ski in Miami. So it sounds like Diddy and his lawyer are listening to each other and saying, look, man, just go in there, transfer yourself to the wing. It's not going to be great, but it's better than the rest of the jail. And just ride this thing out so I can figure it out. Ah, okay. All right. Now, Attorney Simone Redwine, I want you to lean in here with me, please, because I didn't hear any of that. I mean, now that I think about it, now that it's been brought up, that makes sense to me. But to me, this sounds like a defense attorney's way, if I'm thinking about it, also afraid that he might be harmed. It sounds like a it felt sounds like a tactic to get him out of jail. Am I wrong to read this like this, Attorney Simone Redwine? No, I think you're very right. I agree. So yeah, these are all ways in which this attorney intends to use additional evidence in support of him getting bail. See, they're going to continue appealing this all the way up. So they lost the initial appeal at district court level. Next, it's going to be the circuit courts for the second circuit of the United States of America, right? And absolutely, they're going to point to those conditions. They're going to talk about how it's detrimental to him. But the truth of the matter is, it's very likely that Diddy is also going through a detox. We found drugs in, there were, drugs were found in the room where he was arrested He's notoriously known for, you know, having these drugged out parties. So he's probably going through detox. This is probably where he needs to be safely to do so. Mm, Attorney J. Carr, what are your thoughts about high profile individuals able to use this as as a way to stay away from gin pop, as a way to have cleaner quarters, as a way to, you know, create a defense to try not to, you know, serve their jail time? This feels icky to me. I hear you, but I'm all for it. Whether I'm guilty or not, if I'm in jail, I'm going to try to make the best of the situation. So if it, <laughs> if, if it means- This is making you know, the best of it. Right. If I, Because here's the thing. I Kind of like Tory Lane's case, I feel like this case is headed where they're going to find him guilty for at least one of the three charges. I truly believe that. So that means he's going to jail at some point. I think right now he is trying to A- get back out of jail just to enjoy the last little bit of freedom he has. Um, and in the meantime, just be comfortable. Uh, I think what's interesting about this case, his lawyer has not confirmed to my knowledge that he's actually on They said this is just a standard thing they do for everyone that's first kind of coming in. So it's interesting. The lawyer wants to confirm every other detail, but hasn't confirmed this detail yet. So I don't even know if this detail is true that he's actually even on Attorney Turner, talk to me. Does this feel icky to you? Does this feel like, you know, once again, he's taking the back door or a separate elevator or a special entrance when it comes to criminal being, you know, responsible and accountable for his criminal acts? 
Now, Your Honor, you had to ask me that question and use the phrase back door. Back door. Just, <laughs> I, 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 I didn't want to say it. I thought but the same I, thing. I'm going to bring myself in. I'm going to bring myself in. <laughs> and the um, the, 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 I'm always for smart lawyers using the rules to help their clients because that's what I do. But the thing that I think for Diddy is he has this lore now. I mean, he's a grown, grown man. He's in his 50s, he's been at the game for a while. And so most people who think of him think of him as this high profile executive. If you're a person of a certain age, you remember back in the day when Suge Knight called him a punk, right? Oh. And that is still probably who he is in his heart. And so the combination of potentially having that personality and being accused of assaulting women makes it a very precarious place for him to be in prison in the general population because it's my understanding that prisoners don't like men who abuse women. Like they have standards too. So one of the reasons he might be watches because somebody was saying he could get all the bussy he wanted in prison. And I think oh, that was oh, 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 no, I don't think oh, you get all I don't think you get all the bussy you want when you're in prison. Don't they take your bussy attorney criminal well, well see that's what I'm saying that's why I think he wants to be on because in everything that we've seen from what he's accused of he likes being the aggressor. He doesn't like being a victim and he's at risk for being a victim in general population. And so his lawyers are trying to protect him. Well, you know, that's well, interesting. This, 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 go ahead. I'm sorry, Judge. Go ahead. Go, no, ahead, go, ahead. go ahead. What are we going to say? The city, the city's got, a, the federal government's got to watch this. How Jeffrey Epstein, right? Epstein Island, everyone's heard the story, is in a cell with guards who miraculously miraculously disappear and cameras that suddenly don't work and a rope that you never can have in jail can hang yourself. I don't even know how you hang yourself in jail from a bed that can fall over or whatever and die, right? Mm -hmm. Now you have another celebrity. If they go through another issue with Diddy, if Diddy unfortunately is killed in this prison, they have a humongous problem. So this jail administration can say, put Diddy on suit. Leave him there until they sort this out. Got Very it. possible. Very possible. Okay, let's keep it going. <clears throat> I want to talk about now the that that how the number of people are speaking out. We learned on Wednesday that there were over 300 subpoenas, and we know what is it 50 witnesses? Did we say 50 witnesses so far? Yes. So one of one of those witnesses have come forward. A male porn star is telling investigators that Diddy would allegedly watch him have sex with Cassie, and he also makes claims that Rick Ross and DJ Khaled are gay. He also says that he has been um, in the room with Diddy doing these sex acts with Cassie for 15 encounters. And he describes himself as a sex slave who called herpes while participating in this freak off. Attorney Simone, uh, Redwine, jump in here and tell us, give us more details of what's going on in this case and, and what exactly does this mean? Is this, is this testimony like this is bad. What does this what does this male porn star sex slaves testimony means to the defense? I mean, sure. means to yeah. Sure. So this gentleman made this testimony actually in an interview for an unrelated offense that he was being charged with back in 2018. Okay. His name is Jonathan Odie is, is the name. I'm probably mispronouncing it a bit, but the gist of it was he's actually now deceased is my understanding. So that's suspicious. So it's, it's not that this is a new person coming out. This is an old video that is, this was 2018. This was before any of Cassie's allegations. And it is absolutely tracking both the allegations that Cassie has made the allegations Lil Rod has made and the ones that we have seen in the indictment. So it's unclear how exactly he passed away, but it's all extremely suspicious. Mm. Attorney Jay Carter, what are your thoughts on this? I didn't realize he passed away, but I do know the testimony was from 2018. Um, oh, correction. For some reason, he's, he's still in jail. Someone is saying he's still in jail, Miami-Dade okay. County. Okay, okay, go ahead. So he's not, okay, so we can clear the record to say he, he has not passed away. He's just currently in prison. I'm assuming, Simone, he can still be called as a witness, even though he's in prison, if they want him to be a part of this 50. Absolutely. 
Okay, so him being in prison doesn't stop him from testifying. I mean, again, if he's testifying that he was right there in some of these uh, freak offs, sex, right, freak off sex parties, then his his testimony is is obviously very very relevant. Um, it should just be interesting how this all pans out. I mean, <clears> after <throat> a while, when all everyone is kind of saying the same thing, you know. One or two, two, two times is a coincidence, but four, five, six, seven, eight, when everybody's story looks exactly the same, you start to think, well, some of this has to be uh, correct, which again, I think we talked about on Wednesday. Again, baby oil or lube, <laughs> lube is not illegal. Sex right. parties are not right. illegal. None of these things are illegal. It's when you take the consent away. Because if he's a porn star and he's being paid to kind of do this at right. some level, he was consenting to it. So I'm not worried about him because you were there because you wanted to be there. Mm -hmm. The issue you have is if Cassie is saying at some point, maybe at one point she was consenting and now all of a sudden she's not, that's mm -hmm. when it becomes criminal. The problem I have in Cassie's situation in particular is when do you decide that she's a victim because at some at one point she's consensual right and i think mm -hmm. some people are struggling with that and it's not the popular opinion but of course i'm always hold on, hold on hold on order in my court here order in my court <laughs> attorney ross am i hearing what i'm hearing <laughs> what, am, am, I hear, am i hearing what i'm hearing I, yes, always thought, I always thought that it doesn't matter if the woman had sex with you 20, 30, 40, 50 times. No, that's true. Hold on, hold on, hold on in my court. When the woman says no more and you make it more, that's a crime. <laughs> it's not funny. No, no, it is that's a crime. A, no, excuse mean... me, attorney, attorney Carter in my court, please quiet. Okay. Shaton Turner, bring some, yeah. bring me back, please. Bring me back, please. Uh, and now, because what I'm hearing is from Jay Carter that she's side eyeing Cassie. Cause Cassie said, "Well, damn, I'm tired of I'm tired of getting poked in my booty. I'm tired. Finally, finally. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't want, I don't want this anymore. I want out, I, and you couldn't get out. I, That's you know, illegal. Back off. Get out from back That's there. Illegal. That's illegal. Sorry. No means Close no. That's right. Door. Door. Young. No door. means no. All right, Attorney Turner, bring us back because I, I I'm fired up. Yeah." I, I think you're mischaracterizing what my colleague said. Oh, boom! She was no, boom, no. boom, boom, boom. Mute her, too. No. no means no. She no. she agrees that no means no. What she's saying, though, is that because we're talking about a continuum of actions, Cassie does have a credibility problem. And so even though it's true that if she was up for it 49 times and then she wasn't on the 50th time, her failure to consent the 50th time does convert it into a crime. The problem is, is that when there's that much baby oil just swirling around and everybody's freaking everybody, it's not necessarily clear when the no is real and when the no is part of the game. When did oh, baby oil, when Thank did, you. Okay, hold on, order in my court. Ladies, y'all are driving me nuts. When does baby oil impede your ability to know when to say no. I'm confused. Attorney Brian mean? Ross, attorney, up, oh, order my court, quiet, quiet. Attorney Brian Ross, bring some type of sense to all of this nonsense. The first thing I want to do is renew my job application information to attorney Jay Esquire that I offered the other day. It was a brilliant scenario statement she made. <laughs> I'm not going to back attorney Shatan on her effort to clarify it. She knew exactly what she meant. Cassie was, I, I'm going to play Diddy's lawyer. He's entitled to it. There's a presumption of innocence in this country, and he's entitled to it, okay? Cassie, I'm sorry. You was flying around on jet airplanes. You was getting diamond rings. You were getting mink coats. You was hanging out with Tom Brady at the Met Gala. And all of a sudden, now you want to stop. I'm not saying Diddy's a good guy. I'm not defending his character. What I'm saying is, where is the line drawn? And if we're going to put Jonathan Odie, the sex slave, on the stand, really? This is what we're going to listen to? Okay, Mr. Odie, let me ask you a question. What's your career? Uh, Okay, the conversation's over. All right? I don't want to hear it. So that witness is nullified. He's in jail for some felony conviction. He's not a credible individual. Not worried about him one bit. So as far you as baby oil goes, as far as baby oil goes, hey, man. <laughs>
I don't know why you got a yeah, thousand bottles let's, of Arrow, man. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's, move, let's move this. Let's just move this right along. Let's just move this right along here. I do understand the question in your head about why did she stay so long? It was ten years. Why, you know, she was trafficked. Like that's what sex trafficking is, though. That's yeah. what sex trafficking is. That's what sex trafficking is, and we've got to exercise compassion for those who are caught in that cycle, regardless of what their motives are. That's just me as the judge. All right, next up, Diddy's long-term publicist reportedly quits. She's turned off her phone. She's turned off her emails. And she's no longer supporting him or representing him after 30 years of service. Attorney uh, Shatan Turner, talk to us about this. Actually, tell me, because for me as a judge, a publicist, especially a celebrity publicist, you're supposed to make sure that that client's public relation image in the media is always clean. Therefore, you know everything that your client does because you have had to clean it up for three decades as it relates to Diddy. To me, this woman should go to jail. Talk to me, Shaton Turner, about the significance of his 30 year plus publicist resigning, turning off her phone and her emails. She can run, but she can't hide because she can technically still be subpoenaed, correct? She can be subpoenaed. I mean, one thing we can all agree on is that for the past six months, she has failed at that job. His his public image right. has been less than clean. It's been tarnished. It's been dirty. And she probably realized there's really nothing for her to do anymore. This is a sinking ship. It is the Titanic. And so she has jumped off. She's not answering her phone for the media because she probably has some loyalty to him. But there is no privilege. There's no publicist privilege. And so all the things she observed, all the things that he confided in her and everything that was shared, right? There is no NDA that's going to protect him against her testifying about what she knew and when she knew it. And so she will be witness number 301. Attorney Simone Redwine, help me out here because I'm still kind of like, this woman clearly knew who this man was. She had to. Is there any accountability or liability in her space of protecting that man and promoting him to the public as something else? Is there any any responsibility there at all? Well, we're dealing with a RICO. So in RICO, it's a criminal enterprise. So if she's not careful, and she very well may have stepped down out of concern that she would be wrapped into the criminal enterprise, because if she was doing things like assisting with tapes being destroyed, um, right. assisting with telling people the narratives that she wanted them to to repeat that were in untrue narratives, then she could be wrapped up just like the rest, just like- Now, hold on, stay right there, Simone, because I think that's brilliant. I think because you and our brains are on the same wavelength. Because before, she's always been described as a part of Diddy's executive team. Mm. So as an executive team member, we know that means that she's in the decision maker. She's in the room, the small number of people in that room to make decisions for the enterprise. So if that's the case, it makes perfect sense that she would be resigning before all of this hits the fan, because if she's a part of the executive team, that means she was an advising executive to the enterprise, which is now Rico. Am I wrong in reading that? You are correct. You are correct. But it's too late. It's too late, right, Attorney Redwine? I mean, her, her culpability is what it is. Like she's getting off the sinking ship because she doesn't want to be a part of it anymore. But we're talking about past acts that were committed by P. Diddy and allegedly by Bad Boy and his other enterprises. And so like it's done, like her goose is cooked. So right now she's minimizing what she has to deal with. She's probably spending a lot of time, you know, in the prayer closet and with her attorney. <laughs> that's right. I mean, that's a <laughs> Definitely that prayer closet. I don't know. Some of these people, I don't know who they praying to, but I don't think it's my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Sure, they care. He ain't uh, with that foolish. Anyway, but they still are. have to prove, they still have to prove that it's a criminal enterprise. So I'm with, I'm, I'm, I'm probably siding with uh, Brian here. You, if it's not, if, 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 if it's not a criminal enterprise, it's not going to matter. It's just like the, the YSL. They're having a hard time showing that a record label was this 
huge criminal enterprise that committed all these crimes. The minute you prove, the minute you can show it wasn't really a criminal enterprise, this RICO part at least goes away. Now, the sex trafficking, the transporting prostitutes, I don't know about all that, but the RICO part in terms of the criminal enterprise, you still have to prove that Bad Boy Entertainment was a criminal enter enterprise. And I don't think they're going to have an easy time proving that. And proving that. Okay. All right, let's, okay. keep, let's keep going. Charlemagne speaks out against Diddy. And like I shared in the chambers, I've never seen a celebrity at his level be so direct in outing a celebrity before. He said on Breakfast Club on yesterday, as when he was speaking out, I think we may have a clip or maybe not, that Diddy was addicted to booty. He said Diddy was addicted to women booty and man booty. <laughs> That's outing somebody, isn't it? The one of the largest urban talk platforms in the, in the United States right now. He said he's addicted to booty. He stated like an opinion. Booty, 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 booty everywhere. He's stating it like an opinion, though. I don't know if he would. I didn't, well, I no, 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 no. He said, he said specifically, he said Diddy is a uh, drug addict. Mm -hmm. He said he was a power addict. Mm hmm he said that he was a sex addict and that mm -hmm. he was addicted to booty. Well, if he said he like that, so to the viewers, I know, algorithms and viewers, jump down in that chat. Did I make that up? Did y'all hear the same thing? Jump down in that chat. Is that what he said? I heard that he was addicted to women booty and man <laughs> booty, which makes sense. That's where the loop comes in. No. Oh, my Lord. Back to I mean, there's so many uses for lube that it's hard to no, be really. limiting to just booty. But yes, yes, lube does well, I'm come just, in. I'm just following know. Attorney Simone Redwine. I'm just saying, just remember, do not put it in your vajigga. Don't put the Vaseline in oh, your vajigga. Never, or never, never. Have chicken never. Pox. It'll feel yeah. like chicken pox down there. Trust me, I did it by accident. Yeast yeah. infections. Yeast yeah. infection invitation to put the lube down there. Oh, oh, okay. Let's keep going. Uh, what is your question? Can we get to what the question is? <laughs> My question? Yes. What is uh, your question? No, it, it wasn't a question. I just had okay. never, I have never seen, I have never seen such a large platform or anybody, anybody actually come to the table and say that they're, that he, you know, participates in same sex activity. So I'm just but wondering. So Charlemagne, though, maybe they went to a party together. Charlemagne talks about butt stuff know, all the time. But there's Charlemagne, there's Charlemagne. Is he saying this because he witnessed it? Why is where, where is he? Yeah, Charlemagne has a history. Charlemagne has a history himself. Charlemagne okay. has a history himself. He has some things, and if you go back and listen to him, he has a lot of things he says too. So he got to be careful. Charlemagne better watch out how close he wants to get to this Diddy situation. Yeah, because he right? can take you know. this sue for defamation and or be yeah. his stuff can resurface. So he should probably right. Yeah, because he did have that sexual assault rape rape case back in the early 2000s. Right. right. That he right. took a plea plea out. You said you researched be, it. That he plead guilty to a lesser right. charge. All right, Charlemagne, watch out, buddy. All right. Next up, we have Sean. Could avail himself of the um, Shannon Sharp defense that we just learned about about you know, the hyperbole, because there've been so many allegations against Diddy and it has had elements of same sex in addition to him just being an overall freak that I think Charlemagne's going to be all right on the defamation thing because he's just capitalizing on what's in the news and what's what has in been the in the news. news. Okay. All right. All right. We see oh she, she paid attention in, in torts. <laughs> <laughs> Simone was too busy at Miami down at the beach. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. I spent my whole lecture. That's what happens, guys, when you go to a top 10 oh, school. And it, look, it wasn't, anything, but and it wasn't even done. virtual then. And it wasn't no. even virtual. <laughs> I, I studied for my freshman year. I don't know. My one L year, I don't know what happened the other two. I was down there playing with the NFL players. That was back when that was, you know, that was age appropriate. But that I grew was out back of that. When, uh, what, was that what was that blog called? Uh, a dollar alert. Dollar alert. Oh, you didn't oh, even yeah. call Baller Alert. Back then, you just call me. And I'll be like, hold oh, on, oh. Clint Portis, Andrew James, they all down here. Come on, y'all. Y'all crazy. All right, next up, and this one's serious to me. Sean Barrow speaks out about being accused of, you know, put in prison by Diddy when he said, I told you from the beginning that I didn't shoot that person. 
And he put it on me, and I've had to serve the time. Attorney Brian Ross, what say you about Shine being so vocal right now? And what does this mean to Diddy's defense? Well, one thing about Shine is it's one of the true success stories, isn't it? You have a young man who was born in Belize, goes to New York, becomes a rapper. You know, he's the he's the, he's the next one after uh, Biggie is, is killed. Everyone's running around loving this guy. Then the thing happens. He goes to prison. I think he went to jail. And ladies, correct me for three years for this. Eight. Um, it was like eight, eight or yeah, around eight. Eight years he went. I heard alleged. Uh, this is an allegation that he got a bag of money for it from Diddy. But he said his life is ruined. He said his yes. whole life was ruined. He goes back to Belize, runs for office. And now he's affecting the community there in some positive yeah. way. And it's taking camera in his face and asks him. He says, "This man ruined my life." So Thank let me you. tell Correction. you, though. ten yeah. years and he was deported. Wow. He's deported. Oh, that's why his press there is a, is at the bar. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> yes. and, and they said, well, you were at a party with him. He goes, it was a charity event for impoverished children. There's a chance, and this is a deep one, that if Sean wanted to speak to the authorities, because the RICO has a look back, right? L -O -K, look back, that he could become involved and have a conversation with them. It's a small one. It's a small one. But if he, they... they if, if I was the prosecutor, I would not mind sending an investigator to Belize to have an interview with him if Sean was willing to talk to us. That All right, let's go to you, Jay Carter. Let's go to you, Jay Carter, because you are one of the attorneys on the panel that, that that's saying that this enterprise thing, you know, you're not so convinced. What is it going to take it for you? They can prove it beyond a reasonable doubt because this is not yeah. civil court. This is criminal court. So you got to prove each ch charge by, you know, beyond a reasonable doubt. I'm not saying they don't have anything. I'm just saying, can you prove it beyond a reasonable doubt? Now, if we want to go down the rabbit hole of it is a criminal enterprise, uh, Attorney Ross is correct. I would, if I'm a prosecutor, I am going to interview someone like Shine to see if he would be willing to testify or I would subpoena, subpoena him because what happened back then is evidence that it's a criminal enterprise. They're working together in this label to have their artists right. take falls for shooting up yeah. clubs. That's a great example of this record label being more than just music, but it's also a criminal enterprise. Okay, talking about criminal enterprise, let's go to you, Simone Redwine. This Kim Porter's book is driving me crazy. Can someone please tell me, is it real? Is it not real? Are the accounts real or not real? They all sound like what everyone else is saying. Tell me what this Kim Porter book could possibly do or say in support of that criminal enterprise. So it's still unclear. Like, so apparently this book is allegedly supposed to talk about like threesomes that they did, unspeakable violence, all exposed in this tell-all. Now I'm, I'm reading this here, so don't get mad at me for my eyes going to the set. So the new book accuses Diddy Combs of assaulting his late girlfriend, taping himself, having sex with a male teenage pop star. So Who is that? Name. Some people think it might be allegedly Mr. Bieber, okay? Oh, Sex parties wow. with an Oscar winner, allegedly. Cuba Who is Gooding that? Jr. I think perhaps Cuba Gooding Jr., but it says the Oscar winner and his wife. I don't know if Cuba's been married. He's kind of strange. He has. Okay, then that could be it. It's Now, it, interestingly, it's only a 60-page book, so, you know, it's, it's going to be pretty simple, kind of like Superhead's books back in the day. Um, and it's called <laughs> Kim's Lost Words. And it claims to be a collection of the diaries of Kim Porter, the mother of the kids, you know, that died and who died of pneumonia, you guys, in 2018. And it's supposed to That's be linked by her friends. Now, here's what I'm curious about. I want to know more about who's the alleged author and to what extent any of these monies are going to go to her daughters, to her minor kids, because Lord knows they need whatever they can get because we cannot count on daddy at this point. Wow. I'm just I'm just what I'm really concerned about here is there were whispers of this book years. It's been whispers of this book for years. It's been whispers of this this uh, USB. The thing that really stands out in my mind about this book is. Mm -hmm. Should her case be reopened? Should her death? Should her should her coronary report be reopened? Because. I don't understand how someone who's married to a billionaire, very healthy young woman, all of a sudden catches pneumonia to the extent that it can't be treated and all of a sudden passes. Does Am I the only one on this panel that, that there's she a She wasn't question? married. She's an ex-fiance. No, well, I mean, yeah, you know, they never got married, but 
I, I can tell you this. This is the thing. This is like a message for the algorithms. Um, infections in young, healthy women are often underdiagnosed. And what happens is they become septic, go to the bloodstream, and people die quickly. And so if you happen to go into the hospital and you're diagnosed with pneumonia or something like that, make sure that they run your white blood cell count because if they don't, bad things can happen quickly. And because you're young and healthy, you'll be walking and talking and you'll look like you're not as sick as you are and you can kind of fall off a cliff. And the reason I know that is because I happen to be one of the lucky ones. I had a septic infection when I was running for um, training for a marathon in 2009. And but for the blood test, when it was done and resulted, I wouldn't be here today. And so I've always suspected that that's what happened to Kim Porter. If you think about it from the non-conspiracy theory, but there is a whole lot of people on the internet who agree with you, Al, who say something ain't right with the chitlins. And <laughs> Kim Porter was killed because she was going to talk. That's what they be saying. Right. I'm not saying say that, but some people be saying that. And allegedly the book actually, again, if these are her words, they said one of the last texts that she sent was, he got me. Oh, jeez. Like, what? Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, that was my, now again, this is in the book that we don't even know if she actually wrote it, right? right, right but let's right. just, let's go down the rabbit hole that she actually wrote it. That is in that copy of that book that's being published. Wow. That that he wow. that was uh, that was one of her last texts. To got her, it. That he got All right, it. all right, counselors. Let's wrap this up. What I would like for us to do: take the next five minutes. I'm gonna go to each of you, and I'm going to flip the script on you. I am now going to make you Diddy's attorney, <laughs> and I want you to talk to me about if you were Diddy's attorney, mm -hmm. what would you be doing right now to get this man out of jail? All right, let's start with you first, attorney, criminal defense attorney, Brian Ross. First thing, Your Honor, is that my client has an autoimmune deficiency that we're monitoring daily. I am allowed to have him medically supervised. The jail does not have the resources to do so. I want to hire a private doctor that is appointed by, well, agreed upon by the government to go in and check my client. I can assure you that doctor's going to find something over here. All right, so this is what you would use in order to get him out of prison. The, the, the way you're going to get him out of jail is medically. Yeah, the way you're going to get him out of jail is medically. They've already ruled legally they don't like him there. They, they, they want him there. So going back and asking that argument again, I put it to the second DCA could be helpful. Okay, so you're talking about, man, you're, no, no, hold on, hold on, attorney. I'm not talking about getting him bailed. I'm talking about getting, oh, okay. off, getting him off the charges. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Judge. I misunderstood your question. Okay. As far as charges go, listen, all these witnesses are bad. You and I and Simone have been saying this since January. But they're not credible people. Mm. They're mm. all not credible people. They have the same drug addictions. They're on videos doing drugs. They're in rap videos dancing around scantily clad. They have <laughs> felony convictions. They have biases because they need the money and have a reason to lie. So I'm going to tear their character apart. I'm going to go mm. after all their reputations. I'm going to go after specific, and, if the, and I'm not sure what the motions and lemonade would allow, but I'm going to bring opinions if they're allowed to come in. I'm going to destroy right. these people on the stand. Got it. You know, one thing that you've alluded to, Jay Carter, is lack of direct evidence. What would be your argument in order to get Diddy off as not guilty? Okay, so let's just do quickly all three charges, right? So let's start with the lower offense. Transportation to uh, transporting prostitutes. Okay, so that's mm -hmm. the, the third charge. I would argue that I wasn't transporting prostitutes. I don't know how they got here. I don't know who organized how they got here. Um, I didn't pay them. This I I I would just I would just create reasonable doubt around him specifically participating in transporting prostitutes. Okay, so that's that's the lower of the charges. The sex trafficking, I would say, um, and I'm assuming Cassie is their main witness. Again, there it's it's unclear when this became consensual versus non-consensual. Mm. So I would emphasize, you know, at some point she was crossing state lines and willingly, right, having sex with people. And then to Shatan's point, at some point it became unwillingly. 
we don't know where we don't know where the line starts and ends, Your Honor. So we can't prove this beyond a reasonable doubt, even if we can suspect at some point it became gotcha. un, uh, not consensual. So right. I would emphasize that if their main witness for the sex trafficking is Cassie, that her going across state lines consensually doing this or not, we're, we're just not sure. And then the the third charge of the racketeering conspiracy, I would say again, that, you know, we're dancing in the music videos. I got a Grammy, I'm an artist. I got a Grammy. My client got a Grammy for his album, last year. He didn't go to the award show because of the drama, but he got an award. This is a legitimate record label with legitimate artists, including my client, who just got a Grammy nomination for his love album. This is nothing but a record label. There's no proof that this has been this ongoing uh, criminal enterprise to plan and commit crimes. Okay, gotcha. All right, uh, attorney Brian Ross, please mute, mute, mute your mic, please. I'm, I'm hearing you drinking your water or somebody. Please mute your mic. All right, let's go to you, Shatan Turner. What would be your defense to get Diddy home and off this, off the charges? So it would be the opposite of his song, Act Bad. That was probably not a good prelude. <laughs> um, I'm going to go in reverse order, though. I think for the RICO charges, if I was his attorney, I would plead the sloppy defense, that there was no enterprise. We were not that organized. We were in the music business, as attorney Jay Carter said, and our purpose was to make music and to promote that music. And anything to the contrary just is not true. And if there were some people who were under me who decided that they were going to get the come up, doing some things that was not part of an organized enterprise. Those were individuals who were frolicking and detouring and doing some other things while I was paying them. And you know what? I'm going to sue them and try to get my money back. Um, the other thing as it relates to the trafficking and like the assault charges, I think you have to attack the purported victims. And so this is a, it's a, slippery slope for his attorneys because you don't want to look slimy and you don't want to look like you're going after them. But if you can prove consent on the part of the people who engage in this behavior, then it also makes everything fall away. And so really, it's the freaky adult defense, right? Like adults can consent to do things that you may not agree with and you might not understand why we need all this baby oil, but that's how we roll and that's what we're doing. And we might go through the back door, the side door, all of the doors are open to us, but everybody was down with it. And now, oh my God. Yeah, the only reason they're complaining is because they want to check. And they just got right. the FBI and the federal government involved for no reason. It just went awry, but you know, everybody consented. All right. All right. Simone Redwine, what say you? I think everyone really sum summarized my argument. It would be a, a components of each of those, particularly the freaky deaky defense. All the holes were open. Everyone consented. <laughs> and why be a rapper if you can't get itches? You know, if you can't right. get itches, why be a rapper? This is just the music industry. And if you are going to send me to prison for life, well, then we'll have no music industry. Okay, so you know what I would say as a judge, I think there'd be a couple of things that I would do. I would lean my hat as a defense on reasonable about doubt and burden of proof, right? Because that's where you can cause the biggest yeah. question mark. One would be no clear motive, right? I would argue that there's no clear rational motive for P. Diddy to engage in the alleged crimes. What is he going to get out of? It's not illegal to be freaky, right? Other celebrities like him have done more to lose you know, the game from criminal behavior. I would stress that the allegations do not align with his personal and professional interests. It's okay to be a freak. It's okay to recruit people that want to be a freak with them. The other thing I would do is implausibility of the crime as well as the high legal standard. But that's just me. All right, everybody, that's going to conclude tonight's show. Thank you for joining us. Um, be sure to throw, be sure to hit that like button. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Turn on your notifications as we cover more of Diddy Do It Part 8 next week. Have a great weekend. And court is now adjourned.